Hi, HVAC professionals, and welcome back to another episode of the HVAC Webmasters podcast. We're going to be talking about something a little bit more um, off the beaten path and serious today. Um, I'm Madison. I'm Amberlyn. Today, we're going to be talking about customer service. And that's something we normally wouldn't dig into a lot, but we figured that now is a very good time to talk about it, uh, particularly since uh, we're in the middle of uh, COVID-19 isolation. But you can take some of the stuff we'll talk about today and apply it to your customer service in general. So what do we think about Amberlynn when we're talking about customer service? Well, when you think about customer service and talk about it with a client, for example, um, they're always going to fixate on the interaction that they have with the person they're talking with, the professional, whether they can answer the questions, whether they were pleasant professional, and of course, if they were able to do the service and get that completed in a timely and functional manner. That's a really, that's a good answer. Pretty concise. Um, so customer service, Obviously, there's a lot of elements about, you know, being on site, actually performing the work. I think something that Amberlynn mentioned is very important too: communication, communication, especially clear understanding with the client of what you're going to do during this time and during your service is essential, both at the beginning, the end and in between, if you can communicate what steps you're taking to keep them safe, to keep your people safe, and to limit your impact on that person's home or business, you're going to create some astounding benefits for both your clients and your business in the long term. What sort of, bus uh, what sort of benefits, Amberlynn, uh, can you think of uh, if they really nail that customer service? Oh, a lot. Uh, for HVAC professionals, if you can really nail your customer service during this time or any time, um, you can get very heartfelt reviews where the customers express how great you guys were, how you helped them and what you did during this time. Mm, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if you recall, we discussed in a previous podcast about BBB, Google, and a couple other platforms that this is super beneficial on. Um, another thing that I think is super important is the referrals and the social mentions, which are kind of one and the same, but one's online, that would be social, and one's verbal or just regular communication, which is your referral to friends and family. Yeah, you can definitely create a lot of potential revenue boosts for yourself, both in the short term and the long term. If you really nail customer service during this time, people are going to remember it, especially if you showed them that you are concerned with their well-being and their safety. Yeah, and that yeah. will lead to lifetime clients, which is great for your HVAC company. Yeah, very true, very true. So communication, what does that look like? What can HVAC heating and cooling professionals do during this time to communicate really well with clients and to really nail that customer service. I think really the best anyone can do is explain what you're going to do to keep people safe, uh, both during or before, I should say, the uh, actual interaction starts and during the job site itself. So what are some, uh, what are some ways, Amberlynn, that uh, HVAC clients can uh, communicate effectively with people? Well, when you get that initial phone call, just go ahead and take the time to say, hey, this is our current plan for when our professionals go out there to repair your system. Um, we will be mostly outside working on the system or depending on the location, we might need access to this. Um, if you give us access to this, we will do these things to let you know when we are going to move through the house, etc." Um, another thing that you want to do is to explore some ways to continue that service while also maintaining these standards. 
so that you can guarantee that your clients get the same great service from you and that despite having to have this distance from them, they're still getting great customer service as well. Okay. So you're talking about maintaining the same standard of service while also keeping that social distance in place. For sure. That's exactly it. Mm, that's a very excellent um, insight there. A lot of, a lot of communication is going to be direct with people and your technicians are going to be, you're going to be in communication with uh, dozens and dozens of people over the course of the next month. Many of those people are going to want to talk about COVID. Let's be, let's be real. It's a very important issue for them. And you may get sick and tired of uh, hearing about it after a while. Uh, obviously, that's, it's a lot for anyone to deal with. It's a stressful time. But try to maintain that empathy and that compassion or that compassionate uh, tone as much as possible and prepare your technicians to do the same. It's, it's going to be a lot to deal with. And if you, if you aren't planned ahead, then you know, it, it may be easy to, who knows, you know, even snap at somebody during this time. But if you've prepared yourself mentally and if you've taken the time to reset yourself in between service visits and to think to yourself, okay, this is what I'm going to do to keep people calm. This is what I'm going to do to serve them to the best of my ability. You're going to be amazed at how people respond as a result of that. So, You've set standards for yourself on how you're going to communicate with people. Next, you're going to have to plan ahead on how you're actually going to follow through on all these great ideas you've had for keeping people safe. So your good customer service begins and ends with clear communication. It's not enough, though, to just say that you're going to do something. You're going to have to actually follow through with that. And to follow through with it effectively, it's going to require lots and lots of planning. So what are some things that you can do during this time to make sure that you're keeping both your team and your clients safe? Amberlynn, what are some off the top of your head thoughts? Well, of course, everybody is basically sticking with the face mask covering. So when you go onto a job site to repair an HVAC system, make sure you do have that face covering going on. Um, but additionally, consider having a couple sets of gloves on hand for your professionals. This way they're minimizing surfaces they touch. Now, when you're working on a system, it's not going to be always that you can just have your gloves on. You have to be able to move around and you don't want to get snagged on anything. So that's where a second pair comes in. Also, something that could be very good, go ahead and have them bring sanitization equipment. So whenever they touch a surface or have to knock on a door or put the system back together, they can go ahead and wipe it down to give the homeowner a peace of mind. I like that. Um, I think some of the things, you know, the masks, washing your hands, you know, bringing Purell to the job site. I think that's something that many people are doing naturally these days. However, the wiping down the areas that you've touched, that's an added, uh, that's a clear show that you're concerned about uh, diminishing um, the risk to the client. And that's something everyone will appreciate as well. Uh, you're not just saying that you're going to try to keep them safe. That's real, really serving people. And uh, all of your clients are going to appreciate and remember that. So, Customer service could end there, and um, that would be perfectly fine. You would have done a great job. Or you could take your customer service the extra mile and uh, really bless your community during this time. Now, community service doesn't always affect your bottom line, uh, at least in ways that you can directly tell. However, it can really bless your community and it creates and it can create some lasting relationships. Hi, Amberlynn. 
For sure. Um, one of the important things you can do to help your community and really bolster your relationships with the community is go ahead and offer some help if possible. Um, you can like reach out. A lot of people right now need a lot of help because of the pandemic going on. So if you can reach out, provide like an email that they can communicate with you with, to you with, <laughs> apologies, um, they could really help them get the help they need. Um, another thing is you might want to consider the elderly in your community. Um, unfortunately, it is hard for them to get out to the grocery stores and they are the most susceptible due to a weakened immune system state. So going ahead, reaching out, seeing if you can possibly deliver them some groceries is another great way to help your community. Hmm. These are, these are some great ideas, Amber Lynn. I think there are so many different ways that you could help people. And as Amberlynn pointed out, there are those who are more susceptible during this time and are in greater need of assistance. You don't have to shut down your business to support them. And you don't even have to um, dedicate dozens of hours to doing this sort of thing. Even if it's just one extra hour a week that you ask people or that you tell people, Hey, during this hour, during maybe this Friday at six o'clock, we are going to offer a uh, grocery delivery assistance for people in the community. And you can use that email. If you know somebody in the community who needs help, this is the email that we're offering people to get in contact with us and we'd be happy to uh, add them to our list to deliver groceries once a week. That may seem like just a small way to pay back the community for uh, all the business that they've offered you, but people are going to remember it and people are going to be really grateful. Even if it doesn't affect your bottom line, you're serving the community in a real and very tangible way. That's its own reward there. So, Amberlynn, as always, what are some uh, great takeaways for HVAC people? For the first time, I only have one takeaway, and that's communication during this time. It's critical to get your customers the information they need and kind of assuage their fears, giving them that great customer service experience as well. That's a really great point. I think a good, a good takeaway for people to balance that communication with a really solid plan, uh, both physical uh, preparation and mental preparation for your technicians and yourself. Make sure that you're offering time uh, for, your, or for yourself to, between jobs. Sorry, struggling here at the end. Uh, make sure that you're giving yourself time uh, to relax in between visits and uh, that you're mentally preparing yourself to go 100% for that customer service. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening in and we hope that you're doing well during this time. Hopefully you feel inspired and uh, you've gotten some ideas from how, how you can better serve your community and your clients. And uh, again, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.